Darren, are we okay to go? You're on mute if you're answering me verbally. Okay. Good morning, bon matin à tous. Thank you for joining us for today's special media availability on novel coronavirus COVID-19. Merci de vous joindre à ce point de presse au sujet du nouveau coronavirus COVID-19. Before we begin, friendly reminders, please place yourself on mute until I invite you to speak or to ask your questions. To view is speaking, select speaker view instead of gallery, and that button is on the top right of your Zoom video screen. Merci de bien vouloir désactiver votre microphone jusqu'à ce que je vous invite à poser votre question. Veuillez changer votre écran en mode speaker en anglais pour pouvoir mieux voir les porte-parole. Ce bouton est en haut à la droite. Reporters with accessibility needs can pin the interpreters or follow along on the YouTube stream. Les journalistes ayant des besoins en matière d'accessibilité peuvent avoir recours aux interprètes ou suivre la diffusion en direct sur YouTube. Today, we will be hearing remarks from Councillor Keith Eglai, Chair of Ottawa's Board of Health, and Dr. Vera Etches, Chief Medical Officer of Health at Auto Public Health. Nos porte-parole aujourd'hui sont le conseiller Keith Eglai, président du Conseil de santé d'Ottawa, et la Dr. Vera Etches, médecin-chef en santé publique. Je passe maintenant la parole au conseiller Keith Eglai. Please go ahead, Chair Eglai. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. Bonjour. Earlier this year, we came together as a community, collectively. We did what was needed to flatten the curve of COVID-19 in our community. This is something we can all rightly be proud of because we did it together. As a community, we were both caring and collaborative and we got results. We know that the social distancing and the closure of schools, businesses and community settings have taken a toll. These past seven months have been difficult for all in one way or another. However, the rate at which the number of people testing positive for COVID-19 has increased over the past few weeks should be a wake-up call for all of us. It has had an impact on our testing capacity and our laboratory's ability to deliver timely test results. It has an impact on OPH's ability to keep up with the case contact tracing management, which is crucial to preventing further spread of the illness in our community. It has also had an impact on our schools and daycares, our long-term care and retirement homes, our hospitals and our businesses, and on our daily lives in so many different ways. The good news is that each and every one of us has the knowledge and power to turn this around. It is time to get back to basics. The best way to beat COVID-19 is to stop it from spreading in the first place. And we can do that by diligently practicing the public health measures that by now we all know so well. We need to reach into our collective toolbox and keep up the good work that we have been doing. No question that we are tired and there's still likely a ways to go, but there are things we have done before and need to keep doing now. Don't make unnecessary trips outside your home. Stay two meters away from people outside your household. Wash your hands frequently and don't touch your face except with freshly washed hands. Stay home if you're sick and wear a mask if you are able. As I said at the beginning, as a city, we are caring and collaborative. We have done this before and we can do it now. Prevention is the key and it's all in our hands to do. Thank you so much for all your continued efforts. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Etches. Merci. Thank you. I have really something really important that I need you to hear. Our health system is in crisis because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Notre système de la santé est en crise à cause de la pandémie de COVID-19. I am thankful for all that you're doing to prevent COVID from being transmitted in our city. Individual actions matter. And I know that residents of all ages 
are under an incredible strain every day at work, at school. People are just trying to make you know, their lives as normal as possible in what feels like impossible times. However, today I'm reporting 142 new people have tested positive for COVID-19 in Ottawa and hospitalizations are continuing, they're, they're on the rise now. They've, they've doubled since 10 days ago. We will hit 200, you know, way before mid-October if this rate of increase continues. And it's not good. We must do better. There are many moving pieces in our delicate healthcare system. And while Ottawa Public Health is not in charge of all of them, as your medical officer of health, I believe you need to understand what things look like from where I sit. The pressure on the health system is coming from the number of times that COVID is being passed on when people are in close contact. So if we continue to come into close contact with people outside our households, with and maybe one or two additional essential supports, without wearing a mask, or if we continue to see friends and families while we're sick, Ottawa's health system crisis will only get worse. La pression sur le système de la santé vient du nombre de fois où la COVID-19 est transmise lorsque les personnes sont en contact étroit. Si nous continuons d'avoir des contacts étroits avec des personnes de l'extérieur de notre foyer et les une ou deux autres personnes qui sont soutien essentiel sans porter de masque, ou si nous continuons à voir nos amis et les membres de notre famille lorsque nous sommes malades, la crise du système de la santé d'Ottawa ne fera que s'empirer. So preventing the spread of COVID is within all of our power. It's the collective actions of individuals that will make a difference. Prevention is one of Ottawa Public Health's primary roles to provide information and provide supports and guidance to empower individuals to make informed choices for themselves and their families. So Ottawa Public Health is working with community agencies, with the city, to ensure that people who need to isolate are supported. There's an isolation center for people who are precariously housed and work is underway to create a second isolation center for people where self-isolation might be challenging because they're living in a crowded uh, environment. But currently, based on the data from the last few weeks and including today's record number, Ottawa as a collective is not doing enough in the area of prevention. After prevention, testing and contact tracing is used to limit the transmission of the COVID virus. And this system is nearly broken. The volume of people seeking testing is putting a strain on every part of the detection and contact tracing process. There are not enough trained personnel to staff facilities. The laboratories have reached the limits of their machines and human resource capacities. And the test swabs are waiting for analysis. They're sitting backlogged for over a week. This in turn puts public health staff behind on following up with those who test positive for COVID-19 and their close contacts, resulting in people going out in the community who may have COVID-19 without knowing it. The contact tracing team is having to prioritize follow-up with how fast the virus is spreading in our community. There's a plan underway to increase testing and tracing capacity. Laboratories are receiving new machines and they're working to hire people. Ottawa Public Health is automating some aspects of case and contact follow-up and we're continuing to add to the team. These processes take time. Un plan est en cours pour augmenter la capacité du dépistage et du suivi des contacts étroits. Les laboratoires receive de nouvelles machines et travaille à embaucher du personnel. Santé publique Ottawa automise certains aspects de suivi des cas et des contacts et continue à compléter l'équipe, mais ces processus prennent du temps. Hospitals are at the, you know, they're the service we need, available, like, not just for when the virus makes people very sick, and, when, and now we're seeing that, that the, the hospitalizations have jumped today, but for other critical care. So people have put off surgeries and other medical supports, and they're presenting now to hospital with greater needs and in greater numbers. So hospitals capacity is limited, 
to beds available and professionally trained staff, which are stretched to maximum right now. And some of the pressure on the hospitals comes from the lack of capacity in long-term care. People are not able to leave hospital when the number of beds and staff are at lower levels in the long-term care system. The lack of staff in long-term care and retirement homes is very concerning when it has an impact on their ability to control outbreaks, which we are seeing rise in number. So we do not want to see loved ones die in these settings. Again, plans are underway to create more hospital beds, staff and, and personal support workers in long-term care homes, which will make a difference, but these are not going to be immediately in place. The entire system is under pressure and new resources for any of these components take weeks or months, not days to put in place. What can be done quickly is changing our behavior. All residents and visitors to Ottawa need to be doing our part, prevention. Ce que nous pouvons faire rapidement, c'est de changer nos comportements. Tous les résidents et les visiteurs d'Ottawa doivent faire leur part, la prévention. As individuals, we can act now to take pressure off the system, which is on the edge of collapse. Data shows COVID-19 is spreading too fast in Ottawa because of the everyday actions that bring us into close contact with others without masks on. We are falling behind and prevention is the only way now today that we can show or slow the crisis in the rest of our health system. As Ottawa's medical officer of health, I'm sounding the alarm. This is our warning bell. With this spike, we've entered crisis territory, and if we do not slow the transmission, it will lead to stricter lockdown, closure of businesses, public venues, even schools. Nobody wants this. I do not want this. Closures have a very negative impact on the health of individuals and our community. En tant que médecin chef en santé publique d'Ottawa, je sonne l'alarme. C'est un cri du cœur. Il est grand temps d'agir. Avec la récente augmentation, nous sommes entrés en territoire de crise. Et si nous ne ralentissons pas la transmission, cela mènera à un confinement plus strict, à la fermeture des entreprises, des lieux publics et même des écoles. Personne ne veut ça. Je ne veux pas ça. Les fermetures ont un impact très négatif sur la santé des individuels et de notre communauté. We've seen in other parts of the country where regional leadership have had to announce serious restrictions and consequences on activities and movements. We don't want to go there unless we have to. Ottawa, we can still change course if we make small choices today change our behaviors and limit our close contacts to those within our household plus one or two others who provide essential support. When you do have to be out in public, remember the basics. Wear a mask, stay home when sick, stay two meters away from others and wash your hands. Earlier this week, we spoke to where transmission is occurring in our community. It is everywhere, in every neighborhood, and it is our individual actions that are driving the spread, regardless of setting. Please, if you have plans to gather with friends or acquaintances this weekend, I'm asking you to reconsider. Our healthcare system, our school system, our economy, our loved ones are all counting on you. Thank you for doing your part. S'il vous plaît, Si vous prévoyez de vous réunir avec des amis ou des connaissances cet week-end, je vous demande de reconsidérer. Notre système de la santé, notre système scolaire, notre économie, nos proches, comptent sur vous. Merci de faire votre part. This road has been long, very long already, but please, we need to keep going. 
and to continue to act in small ways every hour of every day to limit transmission of COVID. La route a été longue, mais il faut continuer de cheminer. Ce sont les petits gestes qui ont une grande impact. I believe in Ottawa. I believe in us. We can support each other to keep close contacts to a minimum. We have each other's backs and we will get through this difficult time together. Merci, miigwech, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Etches. I will now invite each media agency in reverse alphabetical order to ask their question. Please remember you have one question and one follow-up. Nous allons maintenant répondre aux questions des médias en ordre alphabétique inversé. Chacun pourra poser une question et une question de suivi. Nous commençons tout de suite avec TVA Gatineau Ottawa. Louis Charles Poulain, c'est à vous. Bien sûr, vous m'entendez bien. Oui, on vous entend. Allez-y. Parfait. Euh, question pour Dr. Etches. En fait, là, vous, vous lancez un, un signal d'alarme que tout pourrait fermer si les gens ne changent pas leur comportement. Si les cas continuent à être à la hausse comme ça, est-ce que c'est une question de jour ou une question de semaine avant qu'on qu qu procède à des fermetures massives? Euh, nous sommes dans euh, des discussions avec la province euh, concernant les mesures de limiter nos contacts étroits. Euh, je, je pense que c'est possible de voir des euh, différentes approches euh, cette semaine. Et euh, en suivi, là, vous avez parlé un peu plus tôt d'un nouveau plan qui pourrait prendre euh, quelques semaines à, à être mis en place, plus de personnel, plus d'équipement médical. Peut-être que vous pourriez nous donner un peu, plus de, un peu plus de détails sur ce plan-là qui s'en vient. Euh, il y a différents plans dans les différentes euh, parties de la système de la santé. Euh, par exemple, euh, santé publique, euh, nous, nous avons euh, le, le, les gens qui font le suivi avec les personnes qui ont euh, un dépistage positif et on a des options pour plus d'automatisation. Euh, aussi, on, on ajoute quelques personnes qui viennent de Santé Canada. Euh, il y a quelques soutiens qui deviennent de Santé publique Ontario euh, et on, on, on a aussi euh, différentes personnes qui peuvent aider. Mais euh, pour les hôpitaux, c'est une question d'ajouter euh, les lits. Euh, euh, pour, pour le système dans le, le foyer de soins de longue durée aussi, il veut avoir plus de, de, des employés. Euh, alors, chaque partie de le système euh, essaie de trouver plus de, de personnes, mais c'est clair qu'aucun système ne peut s'adapter à la vitesse de ce virus. Euh, alors, on continue, mais aussi, on a besoin de la prévention. Merci. Merci. Nous passons à la prochaine question de Radio-Canada. Ce sera de Frédéric Pépin. Allez-y. Bonjour, Dr. Etches. On parlait plus tôt cette semaine, vous et moi, là, des, du système de couleurs au Québec et maintenant en Ontario. Ottawa est toujours dans la zone orange. Et vous me disiez cette semaine que c'est les hôpitaux, que ça va bien dans les hôpitaux et que lorsque ça va mal aller, Ottawa sera dans une zone rouge. Est-ce que vous allez changer maintenant en zone rouge pour Ottawa, Dr. Etches? Uh, pas aujourd'hui. Uh, je vais changer à uh, rouge quand c'est important d'avoir une uh, fermeture uh, des entreprises uh, plus grandes. Uh, maintenant, c'est vraiment une, une uh, préoccupation que le nombre des hospitalisations augmente. Uh, c'est certain. Uh, la prochaine étape, uh, on, on ne veut pas voir. <rire> c'est une réfermeture uh, de, de, de d'être à sept points et nous sommes, euh, c'est quand je vais changer à rouge. Docteur Etches, on regarde les choses aller et vous l'avez dit tout à l'heure, votre collègue, M. Eli, l'a aussi dit, on avait réussi à planir la courbe avec des actions de la population. Est-ce que vous avez, vous, Docteur Etches, un doute par rapport à vraiment l'efficacité des actions et que le virus recommence à être tout simplement fort parce que c'est une saison grippale et que c'est pour cette raison presque inévitable qu'on va voir que les cas vont continuer d'augmenter. Non, ce, ce n'est pas euh, inévitable. C'est clair que les actions fonctionnent bien. Quand on, on a la distance entre eux, ça fonctionne bien. C'est possible de réduire la transmission de ce virus. J'ai confiance à les gens d'Ottawa. Merci, docteur. 
je peux juste euh, ajouter que ça prend quelques semaines de voir la, la différence. <rire> Alors, j'ai confiance, on peut faire les, les actions, changer nos comportements maintenant, mais ça prend une, deux semaines de voir la différence. Merci. Merci. The next question will be from the Ottawa Sun. Taylor Blewett, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Taylor, you appear to be off mute, but we don't hear you speaking. Uh, just in the interest of time, we will move on to Ottawa Citizen from Liz Payne. We'll come back. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. We can, please go ahead. Thank you, uh, a question for Dr. Petches. Um, I'm wondering, there have been uh, calls by many organizations, including this morning by the RNAO for targeted return to stage two. Um, I haven't seen any evidence in this lockdown that pleading with people makes a difference. People didn't start wearing masks until they were made mandatory. Uh, why not uh, move to stage two lockdown right now, given what you've described in terms of the situation? I don't want to go to a stage two lockdown because uh, people have already lost their life. Ask. I think Dr. Etches has painted a picture of where we are and where we could end up, but also how we could avoid that how we could get back to those basics. And, and I think people will listen and I think people will take those steps. Can I just ask uh, as a follow-up um, more specifically um, without going to full stage two, should uh, indoor bars, uh, either one of you or both of you, should they remain open? Can you follow the directive you've just yes. given here and also, attend, also go to a bar? I don't think anyone should be going to a bar or a restaurant with people who aren't in their household. And, and that, that is important. Uh, the, the most important action is to limit our close contacts to our households. And that includes when we go out to bars and restaurants. Okay, thanks very much. I have many more questions, but I'll, I'll leave it now, thanks. Thank you, Liz. We will go back to uh, Taylor Blewett, if you'd like to try again. Hi, can you hear me now? Perfect, please go ahead. Awesome. Okay, uh, so I heard uh, something new actually in um, in Councillor Eglise's comments. You had mentioned, you know, it's it's time to stop taking unnecessary trips outside of the house. Um, that is new. I just want to kind of clarify that that that's what's being communicated, and wonder if you can go into a little bit more detail about what actually that should look like. Um, while businesses, restaurants, that kind of thing, they remain open, but no unnecessary trips outside the house. Just trying to like reconcile what that would look like. Sure, I can start and then Dr. Etches, I think, can, can jump in. But what I think what we're collectively saying here is there are things you need to do every day and there are things that are, are more of a, of a want, I guess, for lack of a better word. And so you need to get your groceries, for example. You might need to go to the pharmacy to pick up medication uh, or to drop your children at school or pick them up. Those are things that you need to do. So. We're not in any way suggesting that you don't do that, but again, building on what, what Dr. Etch just said, if you are going to do things over and above that, if you are going to go to a restaurant, if you are going to go to a movie, for example, keep it within your bubble. And I'll, I'll turn over to Dr. Etch's, but I think collectively that's what we're saying. Yes, uh, the, to, to be clear, the most important thing is to limit context to your household. And if you're, you're going out and about activities um, that put you in close contact with others, uh, you want to avoid those activities. Um, so, so we're saying uh, don't join in uh, with, with people outside of your household where there's close contact. Uh, just avoid those places. Okay, so just to confirm then, it is still okay to, to leave our houses, to go and do discretionary things, to go shopping, if, if you know, not just for groceries, but for things that you would want, or to go to a restaurant with your family, like, the message is still that this is okay, as long as you are doing it following the other guidelines. Yes, yes, uh, the, the key is if you're in a area with, with people who are outside of your household, that you need to be using distance, and you need to be wearing a mask. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. La prochaine question sera de, le droit. Uh, nous avons Julien Paquette. Puis allez. 
Merci beaucoup. Um, I'll ask this first one in English because I think uh, Mr. Eglai, you'd be the, the, the best one to answer. But if uh, Dr. Hitches wants to wants to weigh in, uh, I'd like the, obviously the answer in French. Um, so the main issue for the past few weeks has been uh, close contacts from people who are uh, doing activities with people outside their household and the main uh, tools that we have to uh, to enforce or try to to make people follow the rules are reliant on on basically people uh, not calling the police or or, or or calling the the authorities to to uh, I, I guess my question are you are you encouraging people to to reach out to authorities when they see uh, behaviors that aren't. Uh, oh, I, th I think what we're doing, uh, Julian, is encouraging people not to do those behaviors in the first place. Um, we're encouraging people, again, to, if you are going to be outside of your house, to use distance, uh, to be within your bubble of, of, of friends or family, to, uh, to wear a mask. Uh, enforcement is always there, but it's it's the last thing that we want to use. It's it's the tool right at the bottom of the box. Um, you know, it's it's a necessary evil, but it's it's not where we want to go. Uh, we want people to to buy into this, and we've seen the, the city do that before. We saw that in a big way in the spring and the early summer, where we brought the numbers way way down. And and I'm confident we can do it again. As I said in my opening remarks, we live in a caring and a collaborative city. And, and I think we can do it. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's been a couple of weeks now that we've, uh, that we've heard Dr. Etches, uh, you know, send this message to people that they, they should limit their, their, their close contacts with uh, people from outside their household. Uh, does it really work or? Je pense, c'est nouveau aujourd'hui que j'ai le message que c'est une crise dans notre système et uh, le temps est maintenant um, pour éviter les, les fermetures. Um, je pense c'est un nouveau message aujourd'hui uh, avec uh, uh, cette uh, urgence um, et je suis en accord avec uh, notre um, président de, de la conseil que c'est pas l'exact action de police qui est important ici ça c'est pas un rôle c'est un rôle pour chacun euh, de prendre soin aux autres et c'est possible euh, je, je pense que le peuple d'Ottawa peut le faire merci beaucoup merci uh, our next question will be from Global News Craig Lord please go ahead uh, thanks very much um, we saw just yesterday that uh, both the Montfort and the Queensway were saying the Moody and Heron uh, lineups were actually okay and encouraged people to come out in the mid-afternoon to get tested. Uh, I'm wondering, Dr. Edwards, have you heard um, what impact the new messaging from the province, the new guidelines that's saying asymptomatic people should not be seeking tests in these lineups? Uh, what kind of uh, impact has that had on testing locally so far? Uh, I have heard uh, from our testing partners that the lineups have decreased uh, at the assessment centers and it does appear to follow the change in government policy about uh, anyone uh, needing a test uh, uh, who who's asymptomatic uh, that that's that's not what the centers are for. Um, the centers are for people with symptoms or who have been referred by public health. Um, so I think this is good. That's opening up access uh, to the people who need it. Um, the problem right now is the backlog uh, with the swabs that have been taken uh, and the labs trying to, to get through that and catch up. Uh, so there is still this lag, uh, unfortunately, sometimes longer than a week to get the results. Uh, that, that is very problematic. That is what's uh, making me uh, say that we're, we're really uh, in, in a crisis when it comes to the testing system. Mm -hmm. And as a follow up to that, uh, you were saying for many days, if not weeks, uh, before the province changed its guidelines that asymptomatic people should not be getting tests. Um, and we're just seeing this problem start to get uh, a little bit alleviated as the province changed its messaging. So are you concerned that the public health unit's message 
uh, doesn't always align with the province and that that's causing any kind of confusion or uh, 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 extending issues that don't need to be there. I, I think it is important that provincial and local messages are aligned as much as possible. Um, and that's why we've been talking with the province about how to send the same clear message that we want people to limit their contacts to their household plus one or two others. I think this is, uh, this is a message that I expect to, to continue to be um, you know, shared and, and reinforced. I also know that there are regional differences. And so our province, our provincial leaders have, have the challenge uh, that, that what needs to be done in Ottawa is different from what needs to happen in Thunder Bay. Uh, and so that, that's why I do encourage people in Ottawa um, to, to check the Ottawa Public Health website, um, to listen to what the situation is in Ottawa to guide your actions. Um, this, this is why I'm, I'm speaking to people today about what's needed in Ottawa. Um, but there is alignment uh, in the message that you need to limit your close contacts. That, that is clear. Uh, that is what's driving this pandemic wherever you are. Thanks very much. Thank you. Our next question will be from CTV Ottawa. I believe we have Josh Pringle on the line. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, Dr. Etches, uh, CTV News Toronto is reporting that the Ontario cabinet is looking at restrictions uh, province-wide or even regionally in Ottawa. And one of the um, ones being looked at is uh, capacity limits and table limits at bars and restaurants. Do you think that there's um, anything that can be done with, I know you don't want to go to closures, but is there anything you'd support to limit capacity issues or anything in bars and restaurants, gyms and other venues right now? Yes, I think those are important uh, areas to look at. Um, you know, reducing the opportunity for close contact where there's no mask and there's no distance. And so uh, these are the kinds of things that we've been uh, raising to the province uh, that we need to make sure uh, where people aren't wearing a mask, um, there's no distancing, that we send a message that it, then you need to keep it uh, to members of your household and limit those activities. Uh, my follow-up question, is there a scenario where you see if the number of cases continue to rise, at what point you would recommend moving on Ottawa back to stage two or even to stage one? Do you have a, a numbers or a date in mind where if things don't improve, that could happen? I don't want to recommend going back to stage two uh, or stage one. I, I want uh, us to avoid the closure of businesses and the, the devastation to our economy. So I don't have a threshold uh, to go back to that advice. Uh, what I what I know is that uh, we can change the trajectory of transmission in our communities with our own actions. It's been done before, we can do it again to avoid those kinds of, of things being necessary. Um, you, you know, we need to look at targeted approaches to where the transmission is occurring and the behaviors that are causing the transmission. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will be from CBC Ottawa. Uh, Joe Tunney, please go ahead. Hi. Um, so my question uh, is pretty short and sweet. It's just what you know or expect the Premier to announce at uh, 1 p.m. today. I don't have any uh, insider knowledge of what Cabinet uh, may decide. Um, I can tell you our recommendations have been related to decreasing the opportunities for close contact where people are not wearing masks and they might be with people outside of their household. Um, and then as my follow up, uh, have you heard anything about the province uh, changing the way it measures the level of threat and, and moving to a different system? I, I'm not sure uh, what the province is thinking of in terms of changing uh, the measures. They, they have a framework that we, we use, the same framework, uh, which is to look at the level of virus in the community, uh, the capacity in our hospitals, the capacity in our testing system, and the capacity of our public health system. All of those are, are certainly in crisis, you know, this, the, the capacity in our hospitals, the testing system, the public health capacity, and, and we see the growth in numbers and hospitalizations. So, you know, this is in Ottawa. I'm, I'm speaking to the Ottawa situation. Uh, I think those are dimensions that matter. 
Um, and uh, I've, I'm not sure if the province is planning to to make any more specific changes to their framework. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will be from 1310 News. Alex Gouch, please go ahead. And you are- Hello. Uh, so for this is for Dr. Etches. Um, you've mentioned that there's still some people not adhering to public health guidelines and rules to adhere. So in your opinion, what would you like to see done besides just public education to deter and lower cases? Uh, so when we think about preventing transmission, um, you know, providing people with information, helping them understand what we're saying, it's clearly your household now plus one or two supports. That's important. That's, that's uh, what a lot of people are trying to do right now, right? We, we definitely see it. We see people trying to keep distance from others outside their household. We also know we need more, um, uh, again, I, I don't know if you know, tailored uh, approaches uh, for communities where English and French might not be the first language, uh, where there may be barriers to self-isolation. And so there is, there is another less visible, uh, you know, uh, um, amount of work going in to support communities at higher risk. This is very important. We're working with community health centers, with the city, with, with uh, the Ottawa Local Immigration Partnership. This, this is not so visible, um, but it, it's extremely important to find out what are the supports people need to be able to limit transmission of COVID. It's led us to, to decide we want to open an isolation center for people who are living in crowded apartments. Um, because we see, we see the transmission within households. So there, there is this other work uh, underway, as well as helping the general population understand that each of us, all of our actions add up together to stop transmission of COVID in the community. And in, on a slightly different note, and we've obviously seen a massive increase of testing. So in your opinion, how big of an impact has schools had and just overall increased testing at to, in the increasing cases? Well, we are finding more people testing positive because we're testing more people. But at the same time, there are plenty of indicators that there's more COVID in the community as well. Um, so the percent of tests that are coming back positive is growing. Uh, and that, that tells us uh, that there, there is more uh, infection out there. Um, we also see the hospitalizations growing now. And that's, that's an indicator uh, that the proportion of COVID in the community is growing if the proportion hospitalized is growing. Um, so, uh, you know, we're on the wrong track here to keep things manageable. The rate of increase is too rapid. We need to bring that back down uh, to a more manageable level. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the great work you've been doing over the past six months. <laughs> Thank you for your part for sharing these messages. I know clear communication is one of the things that people need. Um, as I agree with the chair. People want to do their part. Nobody wants to, to have more COVID and more struggles and certainly not the impacts on our economy and our jobs. Uh, so I do, I, again, I do have confidence uh, that, that we can turn this again. Thank you. Um, and it is Friday after all. So perhaps before we conclude, I'd ask, uh, I'd invite the chair Eglai if there's any final words or Dr. Etches, if there's one, any last things you'd like to share before we sign off for, for the yeah, other? Again, I, I just want to reinforce what Dr. Etches just said. I mean, one of the ways we get information out is through the people on this call. And, um, you know, it, it's very much a partnership. So anything that you can share to get the message out uh, about the simple rules of prevention um, would be would be greatly appreciated. And and again, I echo what I said at the beginning. What Dr. Etch just said: we can do this. We've done this before. Um, you know, Ottawa is that kind of city. We care about each other. Nobody wants to be the source of a COVID out outbreak. Nobody wants to make somebody else sick. Um, so we can do this. We can do this with people having the right information in their hands. And you can be a big part of sharing that information. And, and again, as, as I say, nobody wants this to happen. People want quite the opposite. They want us to get back to normal. And how part of how we do that is prevention and following the basic rules. Thank you, merci.
Ceci conclut le point de presse aujourd'hui. Thank you very much for all of your time. Wishing you an excellent weekend. Thanks all. Merci.